All right, let's talk football now on the Sportsmax Zone. In recent years, there has been a greater push by clubs and academies in Jamaica to gain exposure for their players. As such, tours to North America and Europe have become more commonplace. One of the latest clubs to embark on such a journey is the Kingston Football Academy, KFA, who recently took both under-15 and under-18 teams on European tour. Well, technical director of KFA and no stranger to the Sportsmax zone, Eric Rademakers, joins us to tell us more. So, Eric, good to have you on the Sportsmax zone. Thank you very much. So, how was Europe? How was the trip? I'll start there. Yeah, it was great. Um, just a small correction. So, we had an under-15 team right. and we had some under-18 players with us. Okay, so not the entire. Yeah, okay, um, no which problem. kind of falls in line with what we're trying to do. It was the third time that we're going. Um, and it's really something where we try to maximize the development of our elite players in our academy by exposing them to this environment. Um, and then when they reach the end of the high school age, the 17, 18, we're now going to see are there actually some players in that group uh, that line up themselves for these opportunities to not actually become a professional player. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, something that we try to do every year. And I, I like to say this year was uh, result-wise, I think, the best year of the three. Yeah, so we see the progress in it. A couple of matches. Um, yeah, well, so it's, it's two aspects. We enter a tournament, uh, which actually last two years we won the tournament with our older team. This year we didn't win the tournament, um, but the bigger part of the trip is going to these professional clubs, professional academies, and kind of create a relationship uh, with those clubs and see how good are our players now compared to the, the better youth players in Europe. Yeah, but Eric, you won matches against teams like Montengladbach, uh, PSV. You know, teams that are big names, they have um, massive developmental programs where they come from. They train a lot more than, of course, the Jamaican players. Uh, talk to me about just the feeling and the work that would have mm. gone into getting your players equipped for teams like that because they train right um, all year round. Right. Um, I mean, you here we see some of the results. We did lose to PSV, um, but I mean, it was a um, it's really proud when you see these these youngsters that are training here and the yeah. conditions here in Jamaica on these fields. Um, and then they're able to translate really what we teach them into a competitive match against some of these clubs. Um, Centroida VV, uh, we played in their stadium. It's a hybrid field that was very fast uh, to adapt to that one. Um, so it's, it's, it's just great to see these guys put in the work over here where really it is, it is just a picture far away. Um, and then when you really only have two weeks to perform, we played a lot of matches in the two weeks that were there. Uh, to see it come together in a result, like you said, the Munch Gladbach match for the last match, where Four really <laughs> it was uh, things come together, and you see even how the players celebrate. I mean, for Munch Gladbach, it's a practice match. You know, of it's uh, it's something where they even feel who are these Jamaicans coming here. For <laughs> us, it's like oh, you know, we play right over there, right next to the stadium, in a in a um, great circumstances, good conditions. And then, um, yeah, it feels like a big reward for the time that we put in when you get actual results on the field. Now that you're back in Jamaica, you have to, of course, reflect and assess where you're at. What was the biggest takeaway from this trip? Um, I mean, I think this year, more even than the other years, um, we realized that if we line up our players correct and we give them this development path, these clubs are actually interested in the product that we have here in Jamaica. Um, of course, you know, at age 14, 15, which most of these boys were now, to continue that trend similar to a player from PSV or Munchen Gladbach is not an easy task. Mm. Uh, but we do know that talent-wise, we can match with them. And it's a matter of us putting in the work here to develop them on that level um, and then keep creating the opportunities, building relationship with these clubs so they're actually interested in giving them uh, opportunities when they reach 17, 18. Yeah, great to have you back in Jamaica, first of all, Eric, because we miss you on the UEFA Champions League coverage as well. The, the, last time we, <laughs> yeah. the, the last time we saw you, um, Manchester City, Arsenal and Barcelona were still in the UEFA Champions League. Right, things and, have and changed. Now, and now they've gone home, like the president of the Jamaica Cricket Association. Lance, let me oh. just say to the viewers, he did let me know that Manchester City went. Although he was not in Jamaica, he did have I to found some me. time, you know, for yeah. important things. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Craig Butler was on the show this week, Eric, and he highlighted one of the benefits of having Jamaican teams play together as a team. Mm -hmm. 
when, when scouts are looking at them, as opposed to one or two players going on a trial and feeling completely dislocated and having to, to you know, make the different, you know, adjustments and acclimatization and so on. So I heard you mention just now the opportunity that these players had in that sort of setup when they're up against big established clubs, but they're playing as a team. They're playing with, with a sort of strategy yeah. that they have already practiced. So they're going there to show or put on, on display what they have learned as a team. Um, I know it's more expensive than sending players on trials mm -hmm. to Europe, maybe one or two, because to have an entire group going to of Europe course, yeah. for such a long time is very expensive. But talk to us about the benefit of going this route for the exposure and even having scouts look at players mm -hmm. as against two or three getting trial, trial opportunities. Um, I, I think it's a very valid point that you, that you point out. And um, it's a team sport. Um, and if the team functions in a certain way, individuals can excel. Yes. And when you take one player out of such a completely different environment as Jamaica and put them over there, it is not as, as of a comfort zone as yeah. you can create yeah, Craig with Craig Butler team. made that point. Yes. So, week when so even on, on top of that, so a difference this year with previous years that we went is that we started training in September. So we selected a squad, 24 players, uh, really for a, a three-year project until the end of high school. But we said if we want to really know our task, each role and each position, transition to attack on the opponent's half, transition to attack on our own half, all these aspects, we need more time um, to create that comfort zone on yes. the field. When another team is only building up from the back, we can quickly transition into a high press because we did this for a month straight in November. Uh, it was not the easy task because you have schoolboy football and a lot of these players play the important role in their school. Uh, but every Wednesday evening, every Sunday, during schoolboy football, we all came together and still had our training, do our video sessions. And if you do that for eight months, nine months, you create a certain um, familiarity, a comfort zone. Even though we're in Europe, yes. even though it's cold, even though it's a fast turf that we're not used to, as a team, you know your task. And I think it's something that we can really learn a lot from as a country because we do too much in, it's a competition now, so we have a, a training. We have a two-week preparation to go to a competition. But that's not where you create a, a team where individuals can excel. And that is really what you want a scout to see. What is the best version of this player? Um, and and it's, it's, a, it's a very crucial thing for us that as a team we develop for multiple months so that we can then perform and individuals can get a chance from that. Um, as you mentioned, it's not, a, it's not an easy undertaking financially. So, you know, it's always, I mean, you see it on the jersey as well. KFC play a big part of it in, in sponsoring us. And, I think if we want to do it more, as even in introduction said, it will be crucial for us to even highlight the value that these things bring to our players. You know, they come back and there's a new standard to them on what is normal in youth football. And the more players in Jamaica, we can get to understand that there are higher levels to how we behave yes. off the field, very crucial as well. Yeah. But on the field, training habits, uh, all of those things, you normalize a higher quality amongst more players, and now you're going to see more role models being created that way uh, that can hopefully really elevate. So the more sponsors, you know, feel free to reach out. We want to go every year. Uh, we want to expose more players, also coaches, to this higher level um, so we can locally also bring up that level. Yeah, I wanted to speak a little bit more, Eric, about the, the hindrances to... Um, our Caribbean attitude or culture toward football because you said something that was very important just now that we have this this tendency to have an assignment coming up and we get some players together for three or four weeks and prepare them and you're suggesting that this this can't develop players we we have mm -hmm. to develop them months on end into years and that is the reason why the bigger football territories globally are way ahead of of like the caribbean because you have players in a structure from their 11 years old and by the time they become 17 18 this is like breathing to them yeah. the way they need to operate as you just mentioned accurately not only the football itself but off mm -hmm. the field issues your nutrition that kind of thing and I, I agree with you that when you expose your players to that kind of environment, it teaches them how far behind we are. 
Um, I mean, I was talking to Mariah about it earlier, and I say we have to realize that if you can go in August and spend a month with the team, get to know the team on the field, off the field, personalities, you know, start to learn better, how do I develop them? And then you go into an eight to nine month season where you play a match on the weekend. So that's a test moment. Let's see what we're good at, what we still need to improve. And then you have three to four sessions in the week that you can work on it. Another test moment on the weekend. And that is really a setup where you can develop players. And in month three or month four, you, you really know the team. The team know each other. How can we push buttons on certain players to get more out of them? Yeah. And every weekend you have a test moment. And I think if we look in our landscape, especially at, at youth competitions, we don't really create that, that chance for, for a team to really develop. And let's get back to the training ground. Let's have another match. Let's have another test moment. Let's work on that one again. Um, and I, I do fully agree with you. We can do a much better job in, in creating that environment where we can have longevity in a team uh, development. Yeah, and you speak about development. And in our conversation, you mentioned Samir Duce who of course remained in Denmark because of his um, performances and the, the talent that they were able to spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, when we talk development and especially being in a country like Jamaica, it's crucial we attach opportunities to that. Yes. Because um, we can have great players over here that in Jamaica Premier League play amazing, uh, but it is everybody's dream to make that step into these higher competitions. Correct. Um, so as a part of just the development of going on these trips, um, there is that, that desire to create opportunities. Now, it's not easy when you're trying to get into European landscape, especially with a Jamaican passport. Some are each, a little bit lucky, have a US passport. Um, mm -hmm. Samir Doshi is half Italian. Ooh. So he has a European passport, which opens up some opportunities for him as well. Um, but you can see that um, clubs have that interest and, and we're very happy that after now three years of the trips, we actually have players that stay there um, and that get these opportunities to actually continue their development over there, uh, which of course will be easier to, to bridge that gap between right. Jamaica and Europe when they reach 18, 19 and, and need to get that first team contract. Yeah, and the Kingston Football Academy, of course, the brand has been growing. The fact that you keep making these trips. How does one get involved in the academy? Um, I mean, we're, we're limited with resources and mainly field, um, so field space is something that you need uh, to develop. Um, so actually there's a waiting list for persons that want to join where we really see who have the commitment um, because as much as we love talented players, um, How many do you have now? Um, we have about 15 teams now. So we have a U7 as our youngest age group uh, and U17 as our oldest age group. Uh, we have a partnership with Rio Mona now because on club level, academies are not that, um, you know, free yet in, in participate everywhere. So we have there a senior team as well, but we have 15 youth teams um, and we really try to get trained three times a week throughout the entire year. Of course, schoolboy football comes in, so then you have a lot of the players that go to their schools and take a break from what we do. Um, but we, we try to really have an 11 month or 12 month development program up until you're tired of it, uh, you know? And of course, for us, the opportunities come in at 17, 18, after high school. And uh, a lot of focus is on the colleges, um, making sure the players are ready to go into a college and earn even a scholarship with their football. Um, but a lot of our passion comes in for that elite level at the highest level. I really hope that even you can contribute to national teams to, you know, at some point you see the World Cup with some of the players that we developed. That's amazing, yes. Uh, so that's the direction we hope to go, go in. Yeah, Lance, you can bring your little grandson. Uh. <laughs> <Clear>. <laughs> All right, well, Eric, we want to thank you so much, as always. Um, this time you held a different hat. We were interviewing you, but we'll talk Champions League next yes, week. Yes, next thank week you so again. Much. All right. You're welcome. All right. So, viewers, don't go anywhere because when we return, Lance will be at the track.